All right, so we want to do 12.3 number 33, which has something about these, what is this thing? It's a Cobb-Douglas production function. Okay, preface. I have no idea what a Cobb-Douglas production function is or does. Can we guess at an area where a Cobb-Douglas production function might be at best? Yeah, this is probably some kind of economics thing, right? Okay, so I have here three Cobb Duck, whatever. I have three of these production functions, right? And so they're each a function of two variables, L and K. And they're basically L and K to a couple exponents each, right? Okay, so this guy is L and K each to the. Yeah, these are one quarter exponents which is a fourth root, right? Yeah. You guys all remember that? Okay, yeah. so all told, if, I, if L and K were the same thing, for instance, kind of how much exponent is going on here? If they were the same, it'd be squared. Yeah, so these are each fourth roots, right? Mm -hmm. And just the dumbest thing I could do to analyze this is to just assume L and K are the same thing. Right? Okay. okay, so if L and K are the same thing, I'm kind of treating this whole thing like a square root, right? Yeah. Right. You guys all see that? Mm -hmm. Is that a good idea? I'll go the future, but. No, not in general. This is a really coarse kind of thought. This is not a great thought, but it's a good first thought. How about this middle one? What's that guy? Two square roots. Okay, that's two square roots. Oops, I don't know, I'm writing two. Which I would think of as together if L and K were the same thing. That's just, just L or K. Yeah, that's just like a first power, right? You guys see that? Okay, how about this other guy? That's fourth root of L and K to the third. You guys see that? That's a three quarter power, right? So that's a fourth root of something cubed and a fourth root of something cubed. You guys all see that? You remember that rule about exponents that you can do that? No? Maybe? Okay. Trust me, you can do that with exponents. <laughs> and so all told that's like a what? Yeah, it's like a three halves power if L and K are the same. It's a little bigger than one, right? You guys all see that? Okay, so in that context, let me think about these questions. They're asking me to match those formulas with one of these. If you triple the inputs, you triple the output. Yeah, so what's that asking like? Acting like? Is that acting like a square root or a one power or a three halves power? Yeah, that's acting like a one power thing. So that's B, right? I think. How can I check that? Yeah, plug some stuff in, right? How do you triple each input? So for this guy, right, I'm going to take, I think it's B, right? So I'm going to try this with B. So I'm going to do F of 3L comma 3K. You guys see that? Okay. So I'm going to get 3L to the 1 half power and 3K to the 1 half power. Right? Which is 3 to the 1 half power, L to the 1 half power, 3 to the 1 half power, and K to the 1 half power. You guys all see that? And that's 3 L to the 1 half power and K to the 1 half power, right? But what's this thing? Since they're the same. It's your we're same. same. Yeah, that's the original function, right? So this is 3 
times half of L and K. So if I triple the inputs, right, I get triple the original output. You guys with me? And then that's only because they're to the one half, right? Yeah. If I had picked one of the others, right, for instance, if I had tripled the inputs in this guy, in right, A here, the one with the quarter powers, what would I have gotten? Yeah, I would have gotten the square root of 3. Hey, this one's about quadrupling the inputs and getting double the output. What's quadrupling to doubling? Is that a... Yeah, that feels like a square rooting, right? So that's probably A. Okay, and then what's this thing about doubling the input almost triples the output? What's that one? Three halves. Yeah, that's exactly. maybe a three halves power. Yeah, that might be this guy. You guys see that? So yeah, this tool's really coarse, right? That I made at the beginning where I said, well, I really might think about that as a square root, I might think about that as a one power, and I might think about this as a three halves power. That's only good when L is K, right? So what if I asked you a question about like, what if we double the L output and triple the K? If I double the L input and triple the K input, what happens to the output? Yeah, you're gonna have to plug it into one of these and figure it out, right? You guys cool with that? Okay, so the other thing they asked me to do is figure out about these contour lines, right? So there's three sets of these things pictured. And they look basically like a bunch of kind of crammed in ones, one that's just a couple, and one that's just a couple further apart. Is the camera able to see these? The camera see those? Yeah, because I noticed the camera. The camera's right there, I was wondering if it's the entire board. Yeah, the fisheye gets to about here. Oh, okay. Cool. It's not quite, but yeah, just want to make sure that. I'm probably standing like half in frame right now. Okay. I'll check that later just to double think so. Um, so, which of these go with which do you think? The crammed ones go with the smaller powers. Yes. E is going to lower, D is going to stay the same, and F is going to increase slowly. E is going to... I would say F is K. Let's see, so if I... Let me think about this in terms of tripling inputs, right? If I triple the inputs and triple the output on one of these, right? That would be this middle one? Yes. Mm -hmm. If I triple the inputs in A, I get only the square root of 3. Right? And if I triple the inputs on this C thing, I get a little bit better than tripling. You guys see that? So I'm really thinking this. I'm like looking at this guy and I'm thinking, this is the fastest one. This one's the middle and that one's the slowest, slowest right? So. These are all going up, right? Yep, my level curves are all going up. Oh, damn it, they're all different. <laughs> Why would you do this to me? Oh, because one of them's really slow. So these ones say F is 1, F is 2, F is 3, and F is 4. And then this one with 2 says their F is 1 and F is 2. What if it has 3, but it's like yeah. way off? And then this one says F is 1 and F is 1 and a half. And maybe there's, yeah, maybe there's a little chunk of that one there. So which one's the fastest one? The one that's the one that's the slowest. Which one's the steepest, right? This one's the steepest. That one's the flattest. 
This one's the middle. You guys with me on that? Cool? Does that help a little bit? That kind of thinking of in terms of steepness, I think, is your go to, or should be your go to. So this is the steepest thing. That goes with the fastest function. This is kind of your middle ground, so that goes with your middle function, and then your slowest is that other one. Cool? Yeah. Questions, deal? Okay. That's actually, what are we getting at when I'm saying fastest, medium, slowest? What am I, what kind of calc game am I playing here? Growth rate. Yeah, I'm really talking about a growth rate, right? I'm talking about a derivative. I'm just kind of eyeballing stuff about a derivative before we even know what derivatives are here. But you guys know what derivatives are in one dimensional space, right? That's why that L is K thing helps, because it lets me reduce a two dimensional problem to a one dimensional problem. You guys cool with that? It's not always a good idea, but it's a nice course thing, and you guys are good at one dimensional stuff. 